After purchasing new equipment from the PE grant, students have just begun exploring a new archery curriculum. Amber and Josie have the story. The National Archery Program has been giving a push for schools to add archery into their PE curriculum. Since the PEP grant was given, Mr. Elser thought it would be a great opportunity to include it into his individual sports class. Uh, we've been doing it for about two weeks. I believe uh, students are enjoying it. I see a lot of students from uh, other PE classes asking if they could do it, so I think there's a big interest. And in, um, I personally hope that it'll grow. Uh, That's one of my goals is that it grows to maybe being an after-school activity. So hopefully there's enough interest. But again, we're getting it started in the PE classes. Hopefully we can uh, start it in the sophomore classes. Uh, either this year or next year, so we'll get more interest level and then uh, hopefully build on that and maybe get a, an after-school program started too, so that'd be great. Isabella Wilson is a student in his class and highly enjoys the new unit. Um, I really like the archery unit in PE because it's just like nothing we've done before and it's a cool thing to know how to do, I guess. This has been Amber Schaub and Josie Spelt reporting for the Cedar Falls Tiger Highland online. Here's a slideshow of dance marathon pictures from yearbook students Ashley Brimacombe, Maddie Mickcomb, and Maddie Wright. Students at Hanson Elementary have begun exploring the mind-blowing advantages to brain research and Adam, Austin, and Jackson helped them to share their exciting discoveries. Hello, this is Hanson Elementary Mindfulness video starring all of the third grade. To start off, here are some jokes about the brain. Jump time! Jump time! Where does a brain go to vacation? I don't know. The hippocampus. <laughs> Hello, this is all about the brain, so listen up. We are going to do a little skip trail. One day a boy was riding on a skateboard and all of a sudden a fox jumped in. Ah, a fox, what should I do? Don't be your brain, brain kids are here. here. Next time this happens, you should use your makeup to act fast. But in your case, stop your skateboard. But watch out, the amygdala can get out of control and it can lead you to trouble. But is that all you do? Of course not. All parts are important. The amygdala is the thing that keeps all you move. Like if you're angry, you can hit, kick, or even bite. But the prefrontal cortex tries to calm you down. If it fails, you flip your lip. Also, the prefrontal cortex helps you think, play, and learn. In the whole camp, you know, some of your memories are kept. Good information to know. Glad we can help. Stay tuned and listen for more information about the brain. Jump time! Jump time! What did the hippocampus sing say during its retirement speech? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Thanks for the memories. <laughs> <laughs> It also helps you know when to run, hide, or fight. The security guard of you, the amygdala, is in the middle of your brain. Without it, you wouldn't be safe. Now you know about the amygdala. 
Joke time! Joke time! What street does the hippocampus live on? The moon railing? Yeah. <laughs> the hippocampus, not to be confused with a hippopotamus. We are going to teach you about the hippocampus. The hippocampus stores some of your memories. It can store good and bad memories. It stores some of your memories from baby to kid to an adult. One of my memories is me crying when I was a baby. One of my memories is when my alarm clock went off in the middle of the night and it scared me to death. One of my memories is when I was in a haunted house and a scary guy popped out of nowhere in a jail suit. Then there was a doctor's office then a lady popped out and said, do not worry, the doctor is essential, which freaked me out. You might have memories like these, or maybe you got hurt. You might have had an argument. There are much more memories from your hippocampus. That's some stuff about the hippocampus. Bye. Joke time. Joke time. When does the brain get afraid? Uh, I don't know. When it loses its ear. <laughs> Cortex helps you calm down and think of all sorts of things, like math on a test and other things too. It helps calm down your amygdala. The amygdala is when you overreact. Have you ever overreacted? You can use your prefrontal cortex to calm down. You just use your prefrontal cortex when you watch this exam. Jump time! Jump time! What street does the hippocampus live on? The memory street? No, memory lane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling annoyed? Are you feeling plain out mad? Then watch how some kids use calming strategies to calm themselves down. How do you like to calm yourself down? I like to shoot baskets. Me too! How about you? How do you like to? I, I go for a job. How do you like to calm yourself down? I like to talk to a school counselor or somebody you trust. How about you? How do you like to calm yourself down? I like to listen to music. What do you like to do to calm yourself down? I like to read. How about you? What do you like to do when you feel stressed out? I like to lay down and think about it. Some kids even like to draw what their feelings are and even write about their feelings. Those are just some of the few things kids thought of, but you can always think of more. Joke time! Joke time! What do you call a hat for the brain? A think cap. <laughs> Today we are going to teach you belly breathing. Belly breathing helps you calm down in a hard situation. First you make a bowl with your hands. Pretend there is hot soup in the bowl. Then you smell your soup by breathing in through your nose for two seconds. Then you blow out by forming your lips like you are blowing out a birthday candle and hold it for two seconds. Remember to stay calm, breathe slow, let's do it again. You can do this again anytime you get really mad or have any other big feelings. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching! Joke time! Joke time! When does it rain breaks? During a rainstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Joke Mindfulness is when you use your prefrontal cortex to calm yourself down so that you can make good decisions, help, and be kind to each other. Let us give you some examples. I was mad because my sister drew on my doll, but I took a deep breath and asked her not to do that again. I was mindful when I played with a new student and helped her carry up her stuff in the classroom. My sister blew out my birthday candles. I asked my mom to relight them so that I could still blow them out. 
I used mindfulness when I calmed while I waited for my sister to be born. When you start to get upset, try being mindful by taking two deep breaths, counting ten, or thinking of others. Fact time! The brain weighs about three pounds. Bigsy, did you do your homework? Yes, I did. I think you need to learn about mindfulness. Understanding how the brain works can help us change what the brain does. We can use Dr. Daniel Siegel's hand model of the brain to help. We start with putting our hand out flat. This represents the brain. The brain has different parts, a downstairs part and an upstairs part that is right behind your forehead. At your wrist, we have the spinal cord that comes up into the skull where it connects to the brain stem. We also have the limbic area where the amygdala sits. These areas help regulate our arousal and attention as well as our emotions. The upstairs part of the brain, which includes the prefrontal cortex, helps us regulate the downstairs brain so we can be flexible and think clearly. That's important when we are learning new things or making decisions and solving problems. Sometimes it becomes hard for our upstairs brain to keep the downstairs brain under control because emotions rise up from the brainstem and amygdala. We can end up flipping our lids. When that happens, we might say or do something we later regret. It can get us into trouble and hurt our relationships. Knowing how the brain works can help us notice when we are close to flipping our lid so we can ask for a break and do something to calm our brain and bodies down. This will bring our upstairs brain back in line so that we can be ready to think, learn, make healthy decisions, and be the best students we can be. Fact time! 60% of your brain is fat. Fact time! The brain is made up of blood vessels in your brain. Hello, today we are going to tell you facts to keep your body healthy, like eating healthy foods such as fruits and veggies. Exercise every day, jog, walk, or play a sport. And get, and get enough sleep for about 10 hours. Work very hard such as math, science, and even singing at home. Be creative, have new big ideas. And learn new things. Challenge yourself. Be calm to let your brain grow. And, and that's, that's how you take care of your brain. Welcome to the Brain Show, where you can quiz your brain knowledge. Now, number one, what does the amygdala do? Brianna. It is where you keep all your mood. Correct. Number two, what does the hippocampus do? Karina. It holds some of your memory. Correct. Number three, what does the prefrontal cortex do? Natalie. Helps you think, plan, and learn. Correct. Number four, the hardest one of all. What would happen if you had no brain? All of you. You, you could not live or know anything. Correct. Because you are all winners, you all get badges and money. Woo! <laughs>
Yep. That's wrap for number 68. We hope you enjoyed it and will also enjoy exploring our website where we have archived all our shows, podcasts, pictures, and print posts. Let us know what you think and suggest some ideas for future stories. And until next time, keep it classy, see ya.